song says the mountains are still being Cause 
This is a move. Come on now. We've been praying, we've been fasting, and God's been moving. Because this is a move. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I'm in the move. I'm in the move. Hallelujah. We give God praise today. We thank God for Apostle Barbara. We thank you for sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and not just the gift. Because oftentimes people come to services and they start flowing in their gift and leave off the word. But we like to do things in order. Amen. So today I'm going to talk to you about open doors. How many of you know, how many of you got some doors that need to be opened? But some of us got some doors that need to be closed. Receive, know, and recognize that when God opens a door, he will never cause you to compromise and he will never cause you to contradict his word. Many times through his will, let me see, okay, here we go with this thing. All right, they laugh at me because we just started the clicker because I'm used to them doing it. So y'all going to work with me, right? Many times... God will confirm what he's going to do in and through you, through his word. And he will also bring forth godly counsel. We know that it's an open door from God when we can rely on him and his word. Amen. People try to do things in the realm of their flesh. They try to get comfortable with their flesh and then they try to say, well, this is God, this is God, and this is God. But when, it, we, when the rubber meets the road, it's not God unless you can depend on the word of God. Because when difficult times come, it begins to speak to you what you don't have. So what we do is, anytime there is vision presented, fear is always present. Anytime vision is presented, anytime God tells you to do something, fear will always be present. Why? Because it's trying to talk you out of your open door. Amen? So I'm going to teach you. The woman of God taught you, she preached to you, and she did the ministry of laying on her hands. I don't know what God is going to do, but I'm going to give you what he gave me, and there it is. Amen. All right. Who got the mic? When God sees you doing your part, developing what he has given you, then he will do his part. When God sees you doing your part, to every promise of God, there's a manward side and there's a Godward side. God is looking for you to do your part. And when you have given him your part, then he will do what? 
Then he will do his part and open doors that no man can shut. When God closes a door, you better know, perceive, and recognize that a window is open. When he closes a door, a window is open. Window represents vision. Windows represent insight. Windows represent a new point of view. He wants to change the way you view things. Windows represent understanding, but windows also represents presence. P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. -E -E. I'm talking about the presence. He's allowing you to see that he's about to change your lens because he needs you to view things a different way before you walk through this open door. Are you hearing me? So when God sees you doing your part, when he sees you collaborating with him, when he sees you jumping in with his work, because it ain't your work. It's his work. It's his assignment. You're just the vessel that he's using to br bring forth the assignment, to birth forth the assignment. Amen? So we got to stop thinking more highly than we ought to of ourselves. Because God never gives us assignments that he will not fulfill. I'm going to say that again. If it's his will, it's his bill. Listen to the message. But what happens is fear begins to speak to us where we once had faith and fear robs us of our faith and keep us behind the door. Look at Revelations chapter 3. The woman of God went to a 7 and 8. And God told me to break this down today. Revelations chapter 3. Picking it up in verse 8 out of the King James Version. Go ahead. I know thy works. Behold, I have said. I know you. your works. I know everything that you do. I know what you haven't done. I know what you said you were going to do. I know your strengths. I know your weaknesses. I know your good times. And I know your bad times. I know your plans. I know everything about you. I know your hurts and I know your pains. I know your works. I know what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. I know thy works. Why? I have set before you. I have set. I have positioned you. I have placed you in a place. Stop uprooting your blessing. Looking at what you can do. You're the best qualified person to minister vision. Why? Because he placed the vision on the inside of you. He would have given it to someone else. My husband is calm. Well, sometimes, but I'm all over the place. You know what? But you're here not because my husband invited you. I invited you. You understand what I'm saying? You acted and you responded. So if I came up here trying to be Apostle Barbara, it wouldn't work. Because God set me here. He placed me here. He placed you here to receive from me. So why would I disqualify myself because I'm loud and you may be quiet? I position you. I set you. I know your works. I know your weaknesses and I know your strengths. Go ahead from the top if you would please. I know thy works. Behold. I have set before you an open door. I need you to perceive, know, understand, and recognize. He said, I did this, not you. I did this. I opened up a door for you. God will never give us a door, open up a door for us that we, he did not want us to walk through. Because that door is open don't mean I have to walk through it. Because the door is open. Does not mean I have to open it, but God said, I'm the one that's opening up the door. Why are you fearing and will not walk through it? Why are you counting the cost of your own pocketbook to write the book, to fulfill the assignment? I know your works. Because I set you in a place, my God. I know I position you before thee an open door. Go ahead. And no man can shut it, for you have little strength. I know your clout. Uh -uh. I know your tenacity. I know your courage. I know your depth. I know your energy. I know 
what type of power that you even walk in. I know you have little strength, but you kept my word. You obeyed me. You complied. And you yielded when it didn't even seem favorable. For thou hast little strength and hast kept my word. You kept my word. You submitted and yielded to the word of God. And has not denied my name. And you did not deny my name. You did not reject me. You did not oppose me. You did not walk in a place of disbelief. But what you chose to do is, is put it on, put my name on it. Come on. Come on. Women without limits, I put his name on it. Glory be to God. If it's his bill, it's his. Come on. If it's his will, it's his. If, if his bill is his bill. vice versa why because I did not reject his name I did not walk in fear even though fear was present I did not allow fear to rape me or molest me because some of us have been molested by fear we've been fondled are you hearing me because we let it talk to us a little too much. You gave it too much power. You ain't hearing me. Let it go. But just because you walk through an open door don't mean you're going to always have peace. Open doors, but no peace. The Lord will open a door of opportunity for you. But all doors don't lead to peace. I'm going to show you in the scripture because everything I say is straight word. When you walk in purpose, listen to the message. When you walk in purpose through, even though doors are open, you will find times where there is no peace, but you still have to go through the door. Because you don't have peace in a situation, this woman of God was confirming some things that God has told my husband and I. And only our church knows about it because we haven't even announced it. But I'm going to let you know that in December, what's the date? December the what? 17th. December the 17th, God has called women, women, Without Limits Christian Center to start revival here. And we've been planning it for months and haven't shared it with anyone yet. Not one person, woman of God. Are you hearing me? Our team has been planning it. We can tell you exactly where it's going to be and who the speakers are. We're waiting on one more speaker to confirm. Are you hearing me? But even though the door is there, fear is present because it is something new. It is something different. What happens is fear is present in order for me to walk through the door but those couple of steps I understand gonna cost me something. Yeah. Those couple of steps will cost me something. Even though the threshing floor is there, that those, those couple of steps will cost me my time, my talent, my treasure, beating my flesh and fasting. Are you hearing me? It's going to cost me something. And so the Lord began to minister to me about the place of open doors. But he said, even though people go through the door and they get access to the door and they concern themselves with what's behind the door, they don't know what to do when they get in the door. Because getting behind the door is just the beginning. See, the keys to the kingdom were given by the Father. It didn't cost you nothing. All you had to do was take the key, insert it. But once you inserted the key, your relevancy had to change. Let me show you. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, picking it up in verse 12 through 13 out of the NIV version. Now, when I went to Troas to preach the gospel Stop of Christ. Stop right there. He told me to say this to you before. When you receive the keys, 
when you receive access, God gives you access to provision. And what's behind the door will benefit you, but it can't benefit you until you get access. Behind the door, listen to the message, is vision, provision, revelation, insight, blessings, and wisdom. But once you get access, your relevancy changes. See, the key, your, your relevancy started here. I'm at the door, but I want what's behind the door. I have what I need to get through the door. But once I get through the door, everything that I went through in the past to get the keys, everything that led me up to the threshing floor is no longer relevant, relevant because I'm already behind the door. Are you hearing me? I don't need faith. That's behind the door. I don't need faith, listen to the message, to access the door anymore because I'm already behind it. I have walked into my blessing. I have walked into my insight. I have walked into my provision. I have walked into my wisdom. So the relevancy of what I had to go through, it doesn't mean anything. You learned and you capitalized on it, but you're no longer embracing it because you're moving into a new place. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Are y'all getting it? Come on. Now look. Now, when I went to Troas to preach the gospel of Christ and found that the Lord had opened the who door opened for me. Up the who opened up the door? The Lord. The Lord opened up a door for the man of God. Listen to the message. The Lord opened up the door. Are you hearing me? I'm making it plain and I'm making it clear because this is what we do as a people. The Lord opened up the door for me. Verse 13. I still had no peace of mind. He had no peace. This is Paul. Listen to the message. He said, I had no peace of mind, even though the Lord opened up the door because my mind was what I, on what I wanted. Come on. My mind was, what, was on what I wanted. Here's the key. My mind... Is on what I wanted. But in front of the door, behind the door, that I didn't once have access to. But when I get through the door, I don't see what I want to see. What happened? It took all your faith mm, to access the keys. Your prayer, uh-uh, your fasting. Your ugly face, yeah, 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 your snot, your tears. It took everything to get the keys. You get the keys that the Lord gave you. You get the name of the book that the Lord gave you. He tells you to start the business that the Lord gave you. He tells you to buy this house that the Lord gave you. He tells you to buy this vehicle that the Lord gave you. Here we go. He tells you, I'm giving you access to this job that the Lord gave you. You get it. You walk in it. And opposition come and you're ready to leave. Read the word. Man of God. I, I still, still had no peace of mind because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I said goodbye to them and went on to Macedonia. Uh-uh. I quit this job. They done ticked me off. I'm leaving this church. I don't understand. I don't know why they acting a fool. Can't handle no opposition. Are you listening to the message? Are you listening to the message? God opened the door for you to write the book. He didn't ask you to finance it. Your job is to move into, the, into it. Your job is to yield. 
Your job is to do exactly what he said. Not worry about how it's going to be paid for. Get out of your carnal self. Get out of your flesh. There is no plan B when it comes to God. I don't believe in a plan B. There's no plan B. If he said it, it is so and so it is. Our problem is we're too worried about being embarrassed. And embarrassment is a spirit of pride. And you got a spirit of pride on you need to be delivered from it. Because I'd rather, I rather get before the Lord and say, Lord, I tried. I thought that was you. I messed up. I made a mistake. Then not do it at all. Listen to the message. Go ahead. So the relevancy had to change. But thanks be to God. But thanks be to, uh-oh, what happened? Did I cut the whole thing off? I think I did. Somebody come get this together. But thanks be to God. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 14 through 15. But thanks be to who? God. Thanks be to God who does what? Always leads us. As Glory be to God. See, he said, even in your mess up and you left, you gave me the peace sign. Thanks be to God. Some of us left here. We left mentally. And then some of us literally left. But thanks be to God. Who he always, always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession. That messed me up. Because he said, thanks be to God who always leads us as captives. When you understand that you are a captive and you are enslaved to a wonderful master, you don't care how it looks as, as long as he's the one controlling your actions. You don't care about feeling like you're being bound because he's telling you to do something. He's causing you to get up out of your comfort zone. The oil is here. I'm telling you, the presence of the Lord right now, I smell the fragrance of heaven. But I'm going to show it to you. Listen to the message. You don't care because thanks be unto God. He always causes me to triumph. He makes a procession out of my triumph for sin. Is that how you say that word? He makes a procession out of it. And he uses us to do what? Spread the aroma of to the knowledge. To spread the aroma of knowledge. So when you walk around me, there shall be a certain amount of wisdom. When they walk around you, there should be a certain amount of insight. When they walk around you, there shall be a fragrance that comes from heaven. Of the knowledge of who he is and not who you are. Not sometimes, not in some places, but everywhere you go. The Bible says in Psalms 5 verse 12, I've surrounded you with a shield of favor. And it'll manifest itself in active goodness, kindness, and love. So if this is favor, wherever I go, favor go. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Because we are looking to our will. We're looking to our plan, and it's no longer our plan. It's his plan. It's his will being manifested in order to walk through the open door. And when we get behind the open door, what do we do? Spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are to God. What do we do? Say that part again. Spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. Everywhere you go, there shall be a fragrance. So when you get behind the door of insight, when you get to the place of vision, when you get to the place of revelation, when you get to the place of so much insight into the thing, into the assignment, into the place that he's called you to do, there should be an aroma of his fragrance that you distribute. We are called to release presence. Where does Jesus live? Where does the Holy Spirit live? On the inside of us. So why would we keep him bound when we're supposed to release? When you release presence, that means everything around you changes. But you can only impart what you possess. So if you're not imparting anything, how do you, how, how is it that you think you can, if you're not receiving anything, how can you impart? 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? He goes on to say, For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. This scripture, this week, I walked out literally. I literally walked the scripture out. And my armor bearers, my husband, they can all tell you, I just kept smelling the oil and it was to the point that it was like a nuisance. I, I, I'm telling you, it, you, have you ever went to a cologne section and it's just in your nose? And they just, imagine just taking cologne and just holding it to your nose. Then it got to the point where I was just tasting it. See, it's called your five senses. I don't only use my five senses in the natural. You know, there are five senses you use in the spirit realm. But you got to come to the serve the prophets class to learn those things. Understand what I'm saying. So you can taste the oil from heaven when you utilize your senses in that realm. Are you hearing me? And so I began to smell. And, and I said, Lord, what is it? Why is it? Why are you? Why is this oil so thick? Why am I smelling it? I'm, I'm laying on my, in my bed and I'm, I'm just laying on my arm and I'm smelling it. I could not get for five days today, even today. I kept saying it over and over and over. I said, Lord, I don't understand. I don't see anything. What is going on? And he gave me this scripture. He said, because you carry an aroma. So the question to ask the people are, what fragrance do you smell? What is your aroma? Do you smell the oil from heaven? There are many types of oils and there are many types of fragrances. But do you know yours? Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said, for we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ. He said, Stacy, I've set my aroma on you. So when I smell, for we are to God the pleasing aroma. Stacy, you are to the Father the pleasing aroma of who he is. There is a fragrance that's supposed to come off of you when you're in the atmosphere. So that means what's on the inside of you becomes released. And when you release presence, the aroma takes residence in the atmosphere. And the people of God have to yield to his presence, his aroma, and his move. Come on. Mm. I feel the presence of the Lord. Mm. To the one. To the one, verse 16. We are an aroma that brings death. Mm -mm -mm. To the other, an aroma that brings life. See, listen to the message. See, your aroma, some people don't want to be around you. Because they know when you release presence, that sin on them got to die. Because no flesh can stand in the presence of God. Are you hearing me? So to one, it brings death. But to the other, it brings life. The saved one, it brings life. To the one that's in sin, it brings death. Not death physically, but death spiritually. Because the things that are on them that are unclean, it got to die. Because no flesh can stand in the presence. But if you ain't got no aroma and you ain't got no fragrance, how you going to release something? To bring forth change in anybody's life. What am I talking about? I'm talking about walking through the open doors and what happens when you get there because I am sick and tired of being sick and tired of people not having language when they know that God has opened up a door for them, but they're not a steward over what they possess. Paul, oh, uh, God opened a door for Paul. Paul had no peace because what he wanted, what he desired, who he wanted to see was not there. So he left. I'm only reading scripture. I'm not going to read anything that a commentary would say. I'm telling you what the word says. He said he left. And he re but he reminded himself of something. Verse 17. Unlike so many, 
We do not peddle the word of God for profit. He said, I don't peddle the word of God. He had to remind himself. Because when he got behind the door, what he desired or who he desired was not there. When you get the book, when God opens up the door for invitations, when God says, uh, 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 do the CD, when you get the baby, y'all ain't hearing me. Come on. You're behind the door, but everything stops. He said here, unlike so, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. What am I talking about? You get the baby and the baby becomes more important than the father. Come on. You get the, you write the book and you so busy trying to go up and down the street and sell it. You forgot the meaning of the book. Come on. You forgot who even gave you the book. Paul reminded himself, he said, wait a minute. I didn't get what I desired. I didn't see who I wanted to see, but I have to remind myself of this one thing that I do not do what I do for profit. On the contrary, in Christ, I speak before God with sincerity as though one was sent. He said, I had to remind myself because I didn't get what I wanted. I didn't see what I wanted. I had to remind myself. I had to go roop. I had to do a rewind, and I had to put on the canvas of my imagination vision. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. I had to put on the canvas of my imagination vision. I had to get back out of what I was in because what I desired was superseding what the Father wanted. Come on. I know y'all ain't ready for this, but I don't really care if you're ready for it or not. You're going to get it. All I'm saying to you is this. The man of God had the word of God. He had something on the inside of him. And he said, I present myself as an aroma. There is something on the inside of me. There's a fragrance that is presented. And because this fragrance is presented, I can depopulate hell. I can populate heaven. I don't do what I do for profit. I do what I do because I love God. I do it with sincerity. And you know what? Wherever I go, you best believe I'm sent. Whatever he gives me to do, I'm sent. You can't peddle me. You can't prostitute me and you can't pimp me. Even myself, when I did not get what I wanted, I had to remind myself on the canvas of my imagination that I need to turn around and I need to speak to those things that be not as though they are. I had to remind myself of vision. And where I was going. What side are you on? What side of the door are you on? Are you on the back side or are you on the front side? Are you still faith in God for something that he's done freely gave you? Let me have them flats over here because I'm about to run right now. I'm here to tell you. I'm out for being cute, and there it is. <laughs> what side are you on? Because oftentimes, faith is present. Listen to the message. Faith is present, and we prostitute ourselves, and we lose sight of what God is trying to do and get to us in our life. Why are we faith in God for bodily healing when he said healing is the children's bread? Why are we on this side of the door and we should be on this side of the door? Walk in what he has already provided. Are you hearing me? What side of the door are you on? If he told you to write the book, if he told you to go to this place, if he told you to do something, you're on this side of the door. He's given you access, but you keep start trying to stay here. And the Holy Spirit is like, I'm here. Move. Collaborate with me. Speak to me so that I can give you what you need. Get from behind here and stay here. Are you hearing me? Okay, I'm going to hit another one because I, I hear it in the spirit. Why are you faithing God? money 
when he tells you how to change your life with it. He gave you the keys. The financial plan for the believer is called tithes and offering. Why are we on this though? Give your tithes, give your offering, and walk in the blessing. Walk in what he's already provided. Are you hearing me? But see, we don't believe. In a nutshell, we're not believing, we're hoping. And it's hindering us from acceleration in the things that God wants to do in our lives. So we're standing at the door at a place with the keys. And he was like, well, I mean, the door has been open. You really didn't even need the key because I already told you 2,000 years ago how to get provision. But you want to do the spiritual thing. Let me get back. Let me show you how ludicrous this sounds. And this is, I have three boys. They're grown now. But if they were kids and they ran in the house, mama, I want a cup of water. Can I go in the refrigerator and get a cup of water? I provided the water. Just open up the door and drink it. This is what we're doing with our vision. We're asking the Father to do things that he's already provided. He has a whole feast. He has a whole refrigerator there of healing, blessings, prosperity. But we're trying to do it here instead of just walking out what he's provided. Does that make sense? And so when we get on this door, in this door, we lose sight of what we already have access to. And we don't know how to work with what's behind the door. Whose side are you on? Let me show you. Mark chapter 5. I'm hitting this pretty good, my God. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Okay, here he is. Jesus is sitting there, speaking. Somebody comes up to him and says, look, bro, your daughter's dead. Listen to the message. Verse 36. Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. He said, why are you tripping? Jesus is already on the other side of the door. Why are you tripping? I ain't got the money. You know how our lips get. Oh, 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 you want me to do this? And he's like, calm down. You overheard. You ain't going to have the money. Fear is present. Mm. You can't do this. Mm. You don't even have the materials. Mm. You can't even afford to buy the resources. Mm. We listening to all of, all of that. And Jesus is like, look, just come on my side of the door. And if you come on my side of the door, on my side of the door, you believe you don't doubt. <laughs> in my side of the door, you walk in faith, not fear. Which door, which side of the door are you willing to be on? Are y'all hearing me? Because we continue to keep feeding our faith, but we ain't moving on it. We're feeding our faith, but never starving our doubt. So what we're doing is we're just continuously feasting on faith and never activating the faith that you've been feasted on you just obese in the word and won't work it verse 37 he did not let anyone follow him except peter james and john the brother of james listen to the message some people you got to shut the door on are you hearing me some people say you better talk to the hand uh -uh. Some people you can't take with you. Moses and Joshua was like that. Moses went up. Joshua had to stay down. Even though Joshua was anointed, he couldn't come up there where Moses was. It was not his time. Y'all ain't hearing me. Some people you can't call up. Some people, though they may be assigned to assist you, it's not time for them to come up. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Everybody is, as my husband say all the time, everybody is not a Solomon. Will you be content with where you are? Your measure, your portion. I'm not trying to be Apostle Barbara. I'm not trying to be anybody but me, Jack. Either you like me or you don't. And I really don't care one way or the other. I'm going to preach the gospel even when I'm dead. How are you going to preach the gospel when you're dead? Because my faith speaks. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion. Could you imagine the father walking in the house and he is the answer? Let that, let her, let her see lie. He is the answer. And they fighting. It's a commotion going on. It's a commotion in your mind. Mind games are telling you what you can't do. It's a commotion and you're siding with it. Faith is present. Healing is present. Power is present. Provision, talking about Jesus, is present. But all he see is commotion, fear, doubt, and unbelief. And even in the midst of the fear, the doubt, and the unbelief. Jesus himself had to become a pattern. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. He had to become a pattern for us. Yeah. Listen to the message. He had to endure mm. yeah. your fear, your doubt, and unbelief. Mm. And he's the answer. Yeah. He gave you everything you need. Yeah. He's rooting you on. Yeah. And you rip. Fuse. Listen to the message. Because when we look at open doors, all we want to look at is the open door, but not what goes on. And I thought to myself, my God, Lord, I couldn't be you. I probably would have snapped up in there. Do you not believe that I can do this? Do you not believe that I can give you the insight to share with you exactly where to move. Do you not believe that I can share with you the people that are relevant to your success? Do you not believe that I can provide for you financially, take that which is broken and set it aright? Do you not believe? Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. And that's how we do. We go to the Father in disbelief and act like we are believing, but we're in doubt the whole time. Because we've allowed ourselves to feast from Satan's banquet table. And he said, I prepared a place in the presence of your enemy. Why are you allowing the enemy to speak at a table that I prepared for you? He said, I prepared for you. A place in the presence of thine enemy. Jesus put out a banquet table just for you. Good God Almighty. And he made the enemy sit there and watch you eat. And he couldn't do anything about it. The enemy couldn't do anything about it unless you allowed it. You think I can't get you here? and get you a place and get you from where you are and start your business all over, it's nothing for me. Nothing is too hard for me to do. Why are you crying? Why are you shouting? Why are you acting a plum donkey? He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. He said, I needed to change your perspective. I needed to change your spiritual lens because the way that you see things is not like they're supposed to be. I need your lens to change. What God is doing today and this weekend is changing your lens so that you can embrace what he's doing in your life and bring it to you and possess the promises that he has for you. But we refuse to allow ourselves for our spiritual lens to change because Satan is constantly speaking in our ears. You're depressed. You're hurt. You're not going to make it. 
all of these different things. And so what he does is pimp us out of our blessing. He molests us out of our, he fondles us. There's a fondling taking place because we're allowing it. Because let me tell you, principalities are governed by principles. So if you allow it, they can have it. Period, point blank. If you allow it, because he has given you the power to do what? Tread upon serpents. He's given you the power to speak life when it's in a dead situation. Yeah. Come on. But our problem is, is we don't want to open up our mouth and we don't want to change the way we view things because we want it to come easy because we're so used to this microwave society. Uh-uh. And the easiest way to believe is just to believe. Yeah. I don't have to believe that my name is Stacy. No. If you told me my name was Barbara, and then you're going to try to make me say that my name is Barbara, I'm not going to argue with you, fool. Why would I argue with you? Your name is Barbara. My name is Stacy. I don't care how much you holler. Listen to the message. I don't care how much you scream. I don't care whatever you say. I'm not going to entertain you because my name is not Barbara. I don't care what the money looks like. I don't care what it seems like. I don't care what the credit score look like. I'm not going to pay attention to it because my name is Stacy and I serve the most high God. Nothing is impossible. Why? Because I carry a fragrance. I'm, beside, I'm behind the right side of the door. And I'm walking through my door in belief and not unbelief. The child ain't dead. But asleep. She sleep. But they laughed at him. After he put Every the- time God gives you vision, stop waiting on people to partner with you. Why do you need a pat on the back? Oh, here we go. What make you think God got to give you a confirmation with your good self? What makes you think he has to give you a confirmation? His word is enough. He put his name on it. Or you ain't hearing God and you ain't right standing with him. They laughed at him. He knew that that child wasn't dead. You know you don't have enough money. But go ahead and tell your enemy... Because that's what I do. I tell my enemy my God-sized projects. Why? Because they keep me on my feet. They keep me on my feet. I sure do. I call and tell them. They think I'm a friend. Listen to the message. I call and I tell them. Why? What did Paul say? It, 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 It buffeted him. He had a thorn in the flesh. Why did he have that thorn in his flesh? He realized that thorn, sometimes thorns are good. Yeah. Because those thorns keep you on point. Yeah. Some of us got some thorns in the church. And we need to keep them there because they keep us on point. They keep us sharp. They keep us walking in love. Yeah. They keep us walking in love when they're unlovable. Yeah. Listen to the message. They laughed at him. After he put them all out. He took the child's father and mother. Even though he laughed, he put them out. Even though they laughed, excuse me, he put them out. It is people in our lives we have to put out, y'all. They just cannot go with us. You can't go with God and stay where you are. That's right. When you're with the father, he's constantly calling you, causing you to a place or calling you to a place of elevation. So if you think you're going to be, if you are at this place next month, you got a problem. Listen to the message. If you are spiritually where you are 30 days from now and you're in the same place, it's a problem because you cannot go with God and think that you are not going to, he's not going to call you to accelerate. He's not going to call you to, to want more of him. It's impossible. So he goes on to say, but they laughed at him. and, And after he put them all out, he took the child's what? Father and mother and the disciples who were with him. Who were what? With him. Who were what? With him. You better recognize who with you. And that's who you bring behind the door. All the rest of them jokers, talk to the hand. But if you don't know who's behind the door with you, and you're bringing anybody and everybody because they got a gift,
We're bringing people in our lives because they have a gift. But God did never, uh, n never intended them for them to be in our lives. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But we brought them in our lives. Let me, and I say this to our church on a regular basis. Please know this. T.D. Jakes prepares sermons for his church, not for you. You just get the overflow. Guess what? When you eat from that table, you held accountable for it. So you better watch what you eat. So if you're not eating from the table that you're already getting and you're not utilizing what you're supposed to be doing, you out of order again. So not only are you listening to T.D. Jakes held accountable to that level of vision, that level of wisdom, that level of understanding because you bought the book. I'm done. Because you did that, listen to the message, you're held accountable for it on top of what you didn't do at your local church. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So all of this feasting from everybody's table is never good. So what he did was he said, let me bring my homeboys. Let me bring the ones that got faith. Let me bring the ones that know what I'm about to do up in here. Let me bring the ones that believe. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. Okay. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kumi, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. This is what the Lord is saying to you today. It's time for you to get up, little girl. Little girl, it's time for you to get up. He already on the other side. Get up, little girl. Do what I've called you to do, little girl. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What you thought was dead is alive. Get up, little girl. What you think needs to be resurrected, I've already resurrected. Get up, little girl. I have taken my breath in your lungs and I poured out and released presence into you. Get up little girl. Now it's time for you to release presence in the atmosphere so things can change in the lives of your people. I'm called to a remnant. I'm not called to yours. Every one of you have a remnant. God has called each one of you to a remnant of people, whether it's your family, whether it's your husband. What I don't care who it is. I don't know. But you have a remnant. And the Lord is saying, get up, little girl. Because everything that you thought that was dead is alive. And immediately, when he made that proclamation, listen to the message, immediately, what happened? The girl stood up and He began. said, that's what I need you to do. I need you to stand up. I need you to stand up and write that book. I need you to spend time with me. I need you to feast at my table. I need you because I know you're a little weak because you've been laying there. <laughs> you've been laying there not doing what I've asked you to do. You're a little weak, but you're standing. I know you have little strength. I know you have little power. I know you have little clout. I know you have little knowledge, but I'm going to partner my knowledge with your knowledge. I'm going to put my super on your natural so that you can stand up, little girl. Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. How can a single parent, Tanika, how can a single parent take on her sister? Come on. God take her from a uh, hourly position to an annual position, yeah. making really, really manager position. Are you hearing what I'm saying? How can he take a little girl from Woodbine, Tennessee, a private prostitute, my saying was you got to pay to play. Used to carry a gun. How can he take someone like her and raise her up? 
Rise up, little girl. I was a licensed practice nurse at 13 years old. Not because of him. Because the people who raised me, my mother died when I was three. My father died at 18. My uncle and aunt raised me. He had multiple cirrhosis. I used to have to uh, put bed, deal with bed sores and, and, and pack them. Massage his legs. How could he take that? 13 years, flip a grown man over to give him a bath. Rise up, little girl, because I got vision on the inside of you. You will no longer bend over backwards for men, but you are a captive. And I lead you in a processional of triumph. That's straight word. When you become a captive, to the father and he is your master there is no good thing that he will withhold from you i told the lord lord i'll serve you in a cardboard box you can take everything i have are you hearing me because i'm alive and jesus has patterned out his life in front of me and if he did it Greater works than these shall I do. Stand to your feet. Some of you just need a touch. You need a touch of a real God wants you to know that he's real and he's personal, but he's very intimate. If you're in this room today, I fulfill my assignment. My job, if you look at the vision, is just to prepare an atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to come and to touch you. That's it done my job so I want to impart his presence a greater measure for some of you of his presence a greater measure of his presence lift up your hands people of God he's flowing He's pouring out. Thank you, Lord. If you'd like a touch, come forward. This time. The Lord said to me that the weight of his glory shall rest upon you. Reviving and a renewing. I don't know what if the mic is even on. Lift up your hands, please. When people tell you to lift up your hands, never come to the altar with your hands down. Always come to the altar with your hands up because it says, I surrender.
rise in righteousness and splendor of your power. I rise in power. I rise in power. I rise in power. I rise in power.
Father, we thank you for this day. Continue to live a life without limits. God bless you.